a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a permanent leader among the Jews. And late one night, this man, Nicodemus, he came to visit Jesus. We all, he said, know you are a teacher. You are straight from God. No one could do all the God pointing, God revealing acts you do. If God weren't in you or on you. Jesus said, you're absolutely right. Take it from me. Unless a person is born from above, it's not possible to see what I'm pointing to you, to God's kingdom. How can anyone, said Nicodemus, be born who has already been born and grown up? You can't re-enter your mother's womb and be born again. What are you saying? Born from above? Jesus said, you are not listening. Let me say it again. Unless a person submit to this original creation, you know, the wind hovering over the waters, creation, the invisible moving, the invisible of baptism into a new life, it's not possible to enter God's kingdom. When you look at a baby and his body, you see the difference. But something you can see and touch, and that's the spirit. Becoming a living spirit. That's the person who takes a shape into the form of something. So don't be so surprised when I tell you that you have to be born from above. Out of this world, so to speak, you know well enough how the wind blows. This wind, that way, and the next way to speak. You hear the rustling through the trees, but you have no idea where this wind came from. That's the way it is with every born from above by the wind of God, the spirit of God. Nicodemus said, what do you mean by this? How does this happen? Jesus said, you are a respected teacher of the Israel and you don't know this basic stuff. Listen carefully. I'm speaking sober truth to you. I speak only of what I know by experience. I give witness only to what I have seen with my own eyes. There's nothing second-handed here. No, no heresies. Yet, indeed, of facing the evidence and acting it. You persecuted with questions. If I tell you things that are plain as the hand before your face and you don't believe me, what use is there in telling you things you can't see, the things of God? No one has ever gone up into the presence of God except the one who comes down from the presence. The Son of Man must be lifted up and everyone who looks up to him Trusting and expecting will gain a real life. And that's eternal life. This is how God loved this world. He gave his son, his only son, to die for us. And this is why, so that you and me need to be destroyed by believing in him. Anyone can have a whole and everlasting life. God didn't come. God didn't come. Or God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling you the world how bad it was. He came to help you and me. Okay, he came to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refused to trust him has a person to fail to believe in the second one of a kind of son of God we introduced to him. This is the cry we are in. God lighted streams into the world, but men and women everywhere run from the darkness. They went from the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil, addicted to denial and illusion, hates God's light and won't Come near it. 
faring a painful exposure. But anyone who work on living in the truth and really welcome God's light. So the work can be seen for God work in it. I just read chapter 3, St. John's from the Peterson Remix Bible. Happy New Year, everyone. I have my bell here. Happy New Year. Just to let you know, this is a new year if you're not sure what's going on. Bow with me as I pray and get your Bible for John chapter 3. Father, I come right now in your name. I come, Father, because this is a new year you has made. And I know what the Bible said for us in this world to do. And that is, their Father, for us to come. You said we must be born again. And as I teach this lesson, I first, dear Lord, want to recognize this new year, the first day of 2022, just to give you praise for being alive, to giving you the glory and the honor for allowing me, dear God, to be used of you. I'm so glad to know that God, Jesus, that I can study your word diligently and you can reveal to me and you, dear God, can anoint me and give me the power and the, the anointing, dear God, to teach. I thank you for it, Lord. I give you the praise. I don't take nothing for granted. I warn, dear God, those who you uh, divinely appoint on Facebook and whoever will be listening on, on WOPFM on 99.9, .9, all those who have been invited, dear God, for them to listen very carefully to the Nicodemus story. Father, dear Lord, I thank you for our community here in Bradley County, our mayors, dear God, our leaders, our teachers, our doctors, our pastors, our lawyers, every leader, dear God. We ask you this year to be a great year. We want an awesome year. We want the Holy Spirit to move in our community. We want, dear God, Jesus, to be better people. We want to change. We want souls to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost with power and anointing, dear God. We want, dear God, the revelation. We want, dear God, Jesus, the revival. We want to be renewed. Revine, remind it that you are God and we are not. So I come in the name of Jesus right now under the song of my voice to let you know God is alive and well. This is 2022, a new year, the first day of the year, and God is calling upon you to listen to what the word of God says. Father, I thank you again. In Jesus' name, I pray. I'm excited. I don't know about you who are listening. I'm so excited to the fact is that. I allow myself, you know, all night. I went to church last night, came home, study, study, study. Didn't even want to sleep. And I, I, I'm just so excited. Hallelujah. Because what God has planned in my life, in our community, in my ministry, what he's doing, and my husband and I, what we're going to do this year, I plan our future for this community, for the church, our church, my, my family. I just excited. Hallelujah. And I want to get you excited, but get your Bible. I'm telling you, this Nicodemus story is so interesting. I'm telling you, some of the insights and revelation God has revealed to me, and I believe he can give me more as I teach it. So um, I'm going to be, what I read was the, like, you know, this is the, the remix is so like telling a story. That's what I was just telling you. But I'm going to go into the evangelical with the church of God. Thanks for joining me, um, Elroy, um, Judy, Jody. Um, this is the, most of y'all know this book, WOPFM, my Cleveland community, and all of you on the internet, I really do appreciate you joining me. I really do. I appreciate you taking time out from your schedule and your vacation time and just listen to the word of God because you will be blessed. I promise you, you will be blessed and you'll see a new insight on this story because I know I have already been, I already received it. And I'm going to teach from, like, you know, this the Church of God book and all these different teachers and theologians who put it together. I'm going to be relating some of their stories and then jotting down um, what God is saying. And you know, many of you know, and every uh, twice in this hour, I'm going to do the repentance prayer. That's what he focus on souls. We're going to bring some souls to Jesus. Okay, salvation through God. And like you know, this story with Nicodemus, this was around the time when Jesus was starting his ministry. Jesus already started his ministry, you know, and he was, it was the Passover time, okay? The people were passing through in the church, and you remember in the church, they were, um, God had to destroy the temple. They were selling in the church and doing all kinds of things. And, and like I always say, let me pause a while. You look at the timing of this story, the timing in your life, what's going on now with the COVID and whatever. You need to listen. Listen carefully because I'm going to go fast because I have a lot to teach. It's like a Nicodemus story. Let me, let me give you a little thing. It's like this man of God, he was a teacher. And like I said, around this time, it was like Jesus already been teaching and out there ministering. 
While in Jerusalem, many of the Jews attended the Passover, believing in Jesus because of his mighty works. You know, how they were proceeding, the superficial of, of, of their faith. Many of them was, was superficially, you know, they, they, they just didn't believe. They were wishy-washy, you know. Jesus was not entrusting some of them because they were just... They were just not really to accept who he was. And I believe this same leader, Nicodemus, and you're going to see in the story, he was someone, I mean, think of it, you having a teacher or a leader or someone, don't really know who Jesus is, never really repeated the sinner's prayer, wasn't born again. And he was a big leader in the, the Jews, with the Jews in, in, in Israel. However, there was a, re let me see, let me, let me, let me slow down. Okay. This search was Nicodemus and his iniquity he inquired because the, uh, coach, the occasion of Jesus was great discovery on the need of the people to be born again into the family of God. So when he went, go to, go to um, um, John 3, 1 through 8, you know, he was a sincere seeker. He really wanted to find out, and he began to ask a lot of questions, which is good. We need to ask questions, and we need to do. But when you keep asking question after question, you get another question, you get another answer, and it all depends on what and who you ask and where you are and what it's all about. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes we need to ask questions. But listen to what Nicodemus would do. John's purpose for composing the gospel was that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ. That John, he wanted people to know who Jesus was. And as he was going about, Nicodemus was representative of all the religion leaders, okay? He is mentioned only in the gospel of John, okay? He knew that Jesus was, he was, he really thought Jesus was on his level. He knew Jesus was a teacher. He really didn't know who Jesus was. But yet, he had students under him teaching them. I don't know what he was teaching them. Okay? That's why he said, get into the Bible. Because here today, we have people teaching you. And they never really fully repented of their sins and asked the Lord to come in their heart. But yet, they're qualified. They have degrees. Because this man was qualified. He was one of the top religious leaders. And you have to study some of this on your, on your own, you know. But, uh, uh, and he was uh, all authorities. Jesus stated that knew, uh, Jesus knew what, what is in a man, okay. I'm jumping around because a lot in this to teach. He knows what it, he knew. Jesus knew exactly. Jesus is the designer. Jesus is Jesus, okay. We ain't talking about man now. Because the, 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 the golden text is Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I send to thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, and the theme in this lesson, salvation comes to Jesus Christ alone, not through man, not through no teacher or no lawyer or doctor or whatever. You know, a certain that God offers salvation through his son and trust Jesus alone for salvation. The Apostle John wrote this in, 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 in the fourth gospel. You need to get into John. John is one of the great ones, like you know. And, 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 and my whole thing when I was studying this, I, I saw and I'm still seeing so much. What I see going on today, and this is why I want you who are listening. We're here to help each other. We gleam off each other, each other preaching, teaching, doing. But when you get into God's word, and you hear God, and you see God, what was going on back then, around this time, why did Nicodemus come to Jesus by night? That's another thing. He may have been busy teaching, um, the theologian said, he may have been busy teaching in the day, his students, or he may just be in a shame. Now, this some of my, he may just be in a shame and embarrassed to let his students see him going to Jesus by night. To ask these questions. He wanted one to know he wasn't, you know, fully delivered. Okay, now I'm putting this in modern terms. We got to understand that we need to learn. The Bible said to us to study and know what the word is saying. Preach the word, teach the word in season, out season. What the word is saying to us. Okay, why did Nicodemus come? Okay, since Jesus did not condemn Nicodemus for doing so, we will assume what his motive was. Okay, he didn't necessarily come. He was proud. And fearful of his position, of his status, you know, boastful. <laughs> to come to Jesus, you know, better you coming in the morning, in the night, in the day. Nicodemus came to Jesus. That's the part about it. He wanted to know, and he called him a rabbi. You know, there was rabbis then, so as far as he was concerned, Jesus was a rabbi too, just like him. You know, whatever reason, um, um, the Pharisees appeared to the Lord, and he was, he was courteous. He addressed him, a teacher and everything. What do you know about Jesus? 
Okay? I'm writing down some questions. What do you know Jesus? But he saw Jesus, like I said, he didn't know Jesus was the son of God. He didn't know Jesus came to save us from sin. He didn't know that. But he'd been teaching all those years in, in the Jews, in the, the, teaching the Jews in Israel and, and doing. There was a man named Nicodemus. He was a rule of the Jews. The rabbi, no, thou art a teacher come from God. Get into the word. I'm telling you, we got to know what the word is saying. You know, this, well, this is what Mark um, 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 Locato said. He said, mark it down. God never turns away the honest seeker. You need to seek God and ask God to show you some things because this is the second birth. We were born, like, you know, in our skin. But we got to be born in the spirit. That's what this lesson is telling about. Except a man be gone, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And we have to know deeper in ourselves. Have you ever, have you came to Jesus or you just go into church? Have you really repent of your sin? Have you really asked God to come into your Are you truly born again? I mean, born again where you can say, I know God in his resurrection. I know him in his, in, in his death. Oh, I know him in his, in his power, resurrection, death. Do you really? I mean, you've been in church for years. Do you really know Jesus? And that's what we're getting into. It says here, okay, Jesus discerned the spiritual and the informational nature of Nicodemus. You know, Jesus could discern us. Jesus knows the intents of our heart, not mine. He knows those that are his. He knows those who don't want him, you know. He knows. Although he created you, he gives us a choice. You have to be born again. You know, you have to ask God in your heart, you know. He 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 just been sent with, 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 with customary uh, um, thoughts and saying he was not discourteous. Like I said, he was immediate by the heart of the matter. Jesus told them and Jesus um, dismantled Nicodemus' frame of reference. Okay, it was partially imperfect. Okay, but a radical rebirth. Jesus said, "Listen." A radical rebirth is what we need. And this is what Leon Morris, Morris he illustrated that the power and the purpose of Jesus' message here by telling us that not a devoted regard for the law, but even, but even a reverse presentation of Ju Ju Judaism was required. But a radical rebirth, a radical rebirth, we need to know the man repeat three times. Jesus keeps saying, verily, verily, I say unto you. That means as the man, verily, Nicodemus and all the tribes and Jews are left not the slightest doubt, but what is about a man is not more than the law. They were dealing with the law, but Jesus is talking about the word of God and the spirit. But the power of God within him to remake this complete, the gospel according to John. They were dealing with their, their own philosophy and what they think. But John was relating it. Jesus was a kind man. Jesus, you know, he, he came uh, 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 not with, with laws, but he came with the spirit. He came with anointing. He was telling Nicodemus in verse 4. Uh, I'm John 3 and 4. Nicodemus asked two remarkable and related questions. A man, how old? And he go on this. I'm trying to fast forward. Someone's been getting some deep stuff. Okay. At Nicodemus, another question he began to ask. And because, because today, many people, even today, with this COVID going on, and the statistics show now, if you was to do a survey, even in the church with Christians, how many people believe in Jesus? How many? It's because people haven't really found Jesus. They haven't really repented of their sins. Some of them don't really know who Jesus is. Because they're not born again. You have to be born again. And we don't talk about born of the flesh. We talk about born of the spirit. And he talk about how the wind blow. How the wind blow. And I'm going to get into this. Is B.F. Westcott. He talk about, and is there one who cannot occur to anyone? It goes to the very root of faith. The great mystery of religious is not the punishment, but the forgiveness of sin. Okay, not the natural premises of character, but spiritual regeneration. Okay, and it's one expect it's a mystery which Nicodemus put for clarity. It's a mystery. It talk about here, it talk about the wind. You know when the wind blows? It's windy here in Cleveland. Right now, it's a nice day, beautiful day. We thank God it's like a, a spring day. But it, the wind is blowing. We don't know where the wind coming from, you know. God send the wind and it's blowing. The leaves on the floor is blowing. Well, this is what he's saying that when we were born again, it's like a spirit. The spirit, the Holy Spirit is a wind. It's blowing, you know. But our flesh, when we born, we born of the flesh. Okay, this is earth. This is, this is our human flesh. But the Holy Spirit, when we are born again, comes into us and it's like a wind blowing. Okay, can a person be old? Yes. Uh, can, can a person be old or too old to be born again? Okay, no. You have to be, you have to know. To be born again... This is what C. Ryle said. It is what to enter into a new extent. To, let me slow down. Y'all forgive me. It's a new year. To be born again is, as it were, 
to enter upon a new existence, to have a new mind, a new heart, new views, new principles, new tastes, new reflections. Okay? And to get rid of the old things, the bad things. Get rid of them. Don't love them no more. Love the new things. Love the word. Okay? I'm telling you, we need to know what the word is saying to us. Thanks for joining um, Cindy Cannon from South Cleveland, the members of my church. Thank you. I'm telling you, water in the spirit. It talks about Jesus and the very, very sanctity. He said, except this is Jesus' word. Go in the Bible. You'll see anything Jesus spoke is in red. Go in there and see. Okay? He said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Some of us don't, 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 don't understand and comprehend us. We've got to study it. Born of the water and the spirit. But he reveals the nature of a new birth. Okay, all that is in your baptism of repentance. This is why to get baptized once you come to know Jesus. Some of you as you are getting ready to do the sinner prayer in five minutes. And if you know someone, call them up now. We need to get our friends to Jesus. That's what God keeps showing me. Many of us are not being light and salt for Jesus. We know people who don't know Jesus. You know, they know, and you know, and they know you don't know them. You know Jesus. They know you know that they don't know Jesus. You go into church every Sunday and you're not helping them. Come on now, that's a sin, probably sin, because God tells us to let our light so shine. Okay, so call someone now. Let's get our friends, our family, people who we know, co-workers. Let's get them in the word. When I come on or someone, and then they hear the word, and they hear Jesus. He reveals the nature. Some of them know, but they just never really repeat it. They go to church, they read their Bible, but they have to ask God to come into their heart, and they need to re re be re revived. And they need to, um, 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 what the Bible said, they need to get salvation. Refer to the nature, but water stands for purification, baptism, repentance. And I'm going to run through this. Baptism is the complementary external sign of internal work of grace. That's what it is. Water is used symbolic for the agency of the word of God. It is instead, it's a double reference to the spiritual nature of the word. When you get baptized, you're telling your friends and your family in the church, you see the baptismal pool. By the way, So Cleveland having one on the 9th, I think. You all call So Cleveland Church. If you want to be baptized in this community, Call the pastor so they can talk. I'm telling you, that's telling your friends, okay, I'm going to indulge in this. I'm going to get in this water. That's to show the completion of your spiritual change. Okay, Jesus, make it clear that no man, no man can even fit himself for the kingdom. Rather, he must be completely renewed, born in you by the power of the spirit. Like I said, the spirit is like a wind blowing. You can't, you can't, you can't, you, you, can, can you catch wind? Can you catch the wind? You know? You can feel it, and that's how the spirit works. You can feel the spirit when you when you're born again and you save and you sanctify. You feel it in your bones and your mind, your body. God is is, is, is talking to us right now. Okay, and um, this is what um, um, Vernon McGee. I love Vernon McGee voice. He has a beautiful voice. He said, "In order to live a life of holiness, we must first receive new life from God. We must be born from above." And that's what I'm saying right now. We cannot be ashamed of this. What God is calling us to, do, people who are listening, we got to let people know they must be born again. They must be born again. Okay, flesh is flesh, and spirit is spirit. In, in verse 6 it say, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, not which is born of the spirit is spirit. We must. The wind blow it here and there. Listen, you could go in the scripture and get some of that. Okay? Okay, this is what the flesh and the spirit describe the characteristic principle of two, uh, of two okay, uh, orders. Okay? They are related to each other. Okay? The flesh is evil. We know that. That's why the flesh got to die. We need to repent. We need to let this flesh die. Flesh die. Okay? When you come to Christ, the flesh die. But the spirit is good. And then the spirit coming, that's good. Okay? That's good. Being of which human flesh connected. But the, the flesh, okay, we are united. We have we still have flesh, although it's dead in earth. But the spirit is for heaven. Okay, when we when we get the spirit, the teaching of the words is that's why sometimes you have to get in for yourself, because I'm going fast. The time flesh will include all belonging to life of human personality and sensation. Okay, people are you know, we are finite, you know, and earthly. But the spirit, God's spirit, you know, you know, he's infinite. I'm just telling you, there's so much in this. We enter the realm of the flesh, you know, when we first were born and the nature rebirth. But we enter in the realm of the spirit by a new birth. We go in a new realm. You have a new life, a new born again. You, 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 you change. Okay, he must be born again. We must be born again. Notice that Jesus used to prove he must be born again. And when Nicodemus came, he said, you know, he was talking about these other people who he was with. He was concerned about them. Nicodemus probably had acknowledged and represent others from among the numbers. The Lord used the pure E, referred to immediately to Nicodemus and the pairs by many taken. That's what I'm talking about. You need to get your people saved. Get your people convert, converted. You know, the application. Nicodemus saying that Jesus said, must, must, 
experience a second birth, leave to the room for the dog about the requirement. Okay, some of this, like I said, you have to get into it yourself because I'm running the in verse eight involves a compassion between the obvious physical priorities of um, uh, 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 properties of the wind and the mysteries action of the Holy Spirit. Okay, in the original language, the word wind and spirit. I went through all of that. Okay, wind, material world, and stuff. Okay, let me go because I got to get up into some of the more stuff. Um, the word blow and and the leaves. I went through all that. Okay, Christ must be lifted up. Right now, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause right now. There's someone listening to me right now. This is the first day of the year. Facebook, WPFM. 99.9. .9. Some of you can't see me. You're on the radio. Okay, now, I'm going to give you time in between. The Lord told me last year, some of you wasn't getting time in, the re in between to repeat this. Some of you already gave your life to God. But you repeat this after me. Okay? If you really want to go, remember what I just said? You have to be honestly sincere and you have to be serious. Do you really want Christ to be Savior of your life? Do you want to be born again? Now is the accepted time. You heard the word of God before. Now you just heard it. So all you're saying, Jesus, you can lift your right hand and say, Jesus, come forward right away. I know you came. You died now, you need to be repeating this. You live a life. No, you came. You live a life. You died and you went to heaven. And you're coming back again. Say, Jesus, I want to repent of my sins. I want you, Jesus, to forgive me. Jesus, I know you love me and I love you too. Jesus, I want to confess all of my sins. I want to get rid of everything, all the bad things, all the sinful things, all that's going to stop me from growing. I'm going to read my Bible. And I'm going to share this with someone to let them know I repent of my sins. I want to be born again. I want to know Jesus. I believe your word and I believe in you. And I believe. You need to be repeating this now. I believe. I am safe. And I believe you heard me. And I believe you're coming back for me. Or you, when you take me, I will live with you in heaven one day. So I thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I thank you, Jesus, for hearing my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Very simple. That's it. That's it. Okay, heavenly matters. In John 3, 9 through 11, this is heavenly matters. In verse 12, it says, if I have told you earthly things and he believe not, how shall he believe if I tell you heavenly things? And I went to some of that in Nicodemus. And some of us the same way. You know, that's why we got to get in the Word and study the Word. If you don't really comprehend some of the simple stuff, some of the simplicity of the Word of God, how can you get the deep stuff? That's why you got to take one step and go into John. Study the book of John. John is very to point. Go there and then go to Matthew, Mark, Luke. Don't go straight to the, don't go to the Old Testament yet. Get into the New Testament, okay? Get into Psalms and David so you can study the Word of God. Then you can get into deep stuff. This, this, this leading Pharisees, he was a professor, you know, who know the things, he, he, he was, he was, he was, he was, the, the leading Pharisees professed to know the things of God, and he was even know the teacher of others. I keep repeating that because I want you to know, there are people out there, of all men, you should have known the way of the truth. Know who ministry you are under. Know who is instructing in you because they can lead you astray and you can be lost. Okay, it happened in the Bible days with Nicodemus. Study the story, cause you. I'm gonna show you some more things about Nicodemus. It, it no way in the Bible to say yet yeah, that Nicodemus repeated. I don't know. You, I, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm telling you, this is the deep stuff. We need to know. We need to know that we know that we know that we are connected with God. We repent to God, not the man. Okay. 
Cause, 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 and, and verse eleven for the third time in this in this disclosure, you know, Jesus used the the keep saying verily, verily, verily. He was he was being persistent. Okay, he want us to know verily, verily, and I, and I'm gonna jump down here. And he received not the witness call of the attention of yet another proof. Israel, this is Israel, generally stood indicated for God for self-imposed spiritual blindness. They were blind. That's another thing God was showing me. The blind leading the blind. That's what was happening. You, you cannot be led by someone who is not born again. Someone who don't know Jesus. Someone who has never really... I'm, I'm, I'm repent and study and know God's word and know what it is. I'm telling you, you better know. Uh, I, 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 if it happened with Nicodemus and those people in the in the Jewish time in, in those days, it's probably, you know, probably, I know it's happening with many people today because you know what? People are just not in the word and they're blind. They're just misled misled and arrogant and ignorant of what God is saying. You need to get into the word sometime for yourself or find a, a, a church where the Bible is being taught, where God is teaching you, where, where the pastor and the leaders are teaching you and you know that they know God and you know they are saved and they, you, you, you got to know. It, 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 God will show you. He will, he, will, he, will, he will show you insight and revelation on your leader. You can't just be going to any church and going anywhere and you not being fed. You're going to be led astray. You remember that man, that Jones man? I forget his first name. He led all them people. This was back in, in the early 70s, I think. All of them, they were following him. And they all died. And there's many other stories related. You all notice, I'm telling you. Know who God is. Know who you're following. All right. That's, that's, a, that's a something I, God showed me last night. You better know. Jesus was capable of imparting higher teaching, heavenly things. But Nicodemus could hardly be expected to believe what is mere advance if he could not believe the simple stuff. I went through that. Okay, this is what Augustine said. Seek not to understand that you may believe, but believe that you may understand. I just told you that. Okay, and the Savior from heaven in verse 13 and 15, 50, and no man had ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven. I'm going to skip through some of you. You're going to have to read that on your own because I got some more stuff here. All I'm saying is this, is that in this lesson, let me pause for a while. In this lesson, let me tell you what I got. I got the fact that in our world today, and even for me, I have a great pastor, Pastor Bishop Lipsy, and I know him. He had a story. He told his story in his life. And he said, and he said, you got to know what people have been through, their experience and how they came to Christ and what they do. And the Lord showed me there are many people and, 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 and they're following false. This is one of the reasons why he said, I'm telling you what I got from this. We're wondering why this fought, like some people call it the fought COVID or whatever it is. And I begin to ask God too, because, you know, we're seeking God. As we study and God begins to show, and, 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 and the relationship you have with God, God will show you some things. But I would say this, some of the people never really repented. They want to go back into church and stuff, and they're going back in, in a deeper hole, worse than it was before. And this is why many of the churches you got to stay outside or in your car or on, on the tent or whatever. And this is, this ain't no particular, this is all over. You want to go back. And the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 14, my people who are called by my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from your wicked ways. He said, damn will I hear from heaven. I forgive you. Sin. But you, some, he said, some ain't done that. They were home watching TV, play, wasn't even praying, wasn't doing, and they come back, want to be back. And that's why he said some of the doors are never open. Because God is, God is not playing with us people. I'm telling you. We talking about God. Don't, you all better don't play with God. I'm telling you. Don't play with God. God is. He, he is God. And Jesus is son. The father, son, and the Holy Ghost in this trinity. You study this. God is not a man that his word is going to lie. He has so many things in his Bible. What he said is going to happen. It's going to be fulfilled. And things going to happen. Whether you want it or not. You are not. Like I said. Or you are not God. Now don't try to be God. Get into his word and see what he's saying. Every man, you have to repent of your own sins. 
You don't need no one to repent. You got to repent. That's why I said bring people to Jesus. Your friends and those who know Jesus, you got to bring them to Jesus and let them repent and let someone repeat the sin or you repeat the sin of prayer and get them saved because they're not going to see the kingdom of God. The Bible says, accept the mommy born again and born again is of the spirit. Okay, born of the spirit and you have to help them. You have to help your family members and help those. That's all of us. We all know people. We all have family members completely not together. They're not together. And see this the bell. This is a new year. See my bell? This is a new year. You need to ring the bell and let them know. It's time. It's time. Let them know the bell is ringing on their life. Okay? The bell is ringing on their life. And God is not playing. God told me this last night. He, 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 when I, three or four o'clock this month. He said, I'm not playing. And he said, I want you, Sister Norm. I'm a chaplain. I'm an elder. I got position. I'm in my position. He said, I want you to open your mouth and let people know. That 2022 is going to be a year. Souls are coming to Jesus. People are going to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But we got to bring them. We have to help them. We have to let them know that they need to open their mouth and repeat the sinner's prayer. And they need to get into a Bible teaching church. And they need to follow Jesus' example. So they will stay on the straight and narrow way. Okay, that's what I saw. Because I always look at what God is teaching me first. What he's saying to me, to me and my household. My daughter, my son-in-law, my husband, my house. I'm in order. I ain't going to be out there teaching and talking to people. And I, I, the devil is a lie. Rebuke that. And that's what he said. Many of you, you out there help. What about your house? Are your house together? Leaders, pastors, teach. I'm telling you. We need to make sure our ground is solid. We need to make sure. Okay, I'm going into, I'm going to jump in this. I'm going to go to God so loved the world. God so loved the world. There's a lot as I got to skip through because of time. Um, God so loved, but, but the son of man, he must be lifted up. We must lift up. Heavenly things must be lifted up. Eternal life has to be more quality than quantity. That is, it is superior nature of the extension rather than the longevity of that which is central to the thought. Okay, this is what Chuck Swindle said. Chuck Swindle said, I listen to him sometimes. Chuck Swindle said, Emmanuel, God with us. He who raised in heaven. Okay? No, that's not race. Y'all forgive me. He, God with us, he who resigned in heaven, so equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Spirit, willingly descended into our world. He breathed our air, felt our pain, knew our sorrow, and died for our sins. That's why he came. My God, that's deep. Okay, let me go into the greatest promise. For God so loved the world. This is the greatest promise that he gave. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall have a lasting life. God sent his son into this world that condemned the world that by the world through him we might be saved. He that believe it on him is not condemned, but he that believe it is not condemned. He that believe it is, he that believe it not is condemned already because you don't believe. That's why I come now and tell you to believe in God. Boy, believe in God. Believe God came. He love you. He's, he wants you. You love him. Believe it because he that had believed in the name of the only begotten of God. Okay? The most tremendous statement that has ever been confronted in human mind is John 3 and 16. Yet everybody know that. No matter what language. They heard it somewhere along the funeral, somewhere the wedding. The statement of God, gracious love for the world. How can it be that God so loved us? Okay, partially explain the lie, the fact that it is God's nature to love. The partial explain lies in the fact that it is God's nature. God is love. God is love. And that's why I keep telling people, if you say you have God and you have God in your heart and you, you fall in God's example, you have to be loved so people can see love in you. The Bible says love our neighbors, love our enemies, love those who persecute us, love those who are against us, those who don't understand us, those who misunderstand us. We still got to love them if we have God because that's who God is. His very nature. And I ain't going to with parish and all that stuff is because you all need to listen to get to know Jesus. This is a condensed to the condition of everyone who believe on Jesus Christ. It is God's offer to Nicodemus. Just God told Nicodemus. The statement is clearly, it is the same of saying, He is pardoned, justified, clear um, from all guilt, delivered from the curse of the law, no longer contained sinners and all that. Okay, this is what David Jeremiah, another person I'll listen to, he said, saving us is the greatest and most concrete demonstration of God's love. The, defi the, the definitive display of his grace throughout time and eternity. We can live on. You see, we're going to live on. When you come to Jesus, you know, this world and some when you talk about it, you know, of the flesh, 
We only live it in this world, in the flesh for a while. But when we give Jesus our life and we get the Holy Spirit, by faith we believe in God, we're going to live eternally on. Eternally means to live on and on and on. Jesus turned to one of his favorite metaphors. And that's why I have my life. His favorite metaphors Jesus talked about. That a light. Christ is the light of the world. And I'm going to turn my light on right now for a little bit. I don't know if Facebook. Well, this Facebook here. See Facebook? This is how light you need to shine. I'm going to talk a bit more with this. Okay? God told me, give me this demonstration. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pour it out this year. I'm telling you, you better get ready because I'm telling you. Jesus, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, Jesus turned to one of his favorite people, and that is light. Christ is the light of the world. And it is the nature of light to send forth his rays. Okay? Impartially on all, 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 all that will receive them. Okay? That's what I'm saying. We have to make sure we have light in us. Light in us when we go into to, 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 to um, so we can shine if we said we got Jesus, because that's what Jesus is. But sinners, like he said, the sinners, they hate the light. When you go to the to talk to someone, they're a sinner, remember, they don't like this light, okay? But you need to shine it. They don't like this. Because, they, they, see, they do evil in the darkness, you know? The, the evil deeds are disclosure. You know, they, they, they just want to, that's just how people are. They love the darkness, because they like to stay in the dark because they feel like no one can see what they're doing. But they got, I got news for them. God knows what they're doing. And God will reveal some of the stuff what they're doing. Nothing going to hide from God because it is God's nature. You know, they think that um, um, there's sin and that no one can see it because they're in the dark. But let me tell you something. God going to put the light on that today. The light is coming to you. God is born. He said he must be born again. God's people... Do not fear the light. See, we who got Christ, we ain't fear this light. I love the light. See the light here? Cause let my light so shine. I'm going to be a radiant light more this year. So shine that others will see good works. Not just works, good works. And glorify my Father which is in heaven. I'm going to do another prayer. So you know somebody who didn't catch this time, you better call them. Call your friend. This is a new year. This is the first day of the new brand new. 2020 is a great time to give your heart to the Lord. So you can start the year off right. Some of you probably just waking up. You've been partying. This is your sister to let you know. God said, except the man be born again, you're not going to see the kingdom of God. Come on now. 99.9. .9. If you're on the radio, I know you can't see this light, but on internet, I'm going to shine it right in your face. I want you to know this is God's light. He, he, he used this metaphor to let you know. God's people do not, we don't, we don't fear the light. For there is nothing in, in, in our lives that we have to hide. You know, they love the light. And so they love the light of the world and rejoice to live in the sunshine of his love. This is love. Okay, this is where the story of Jesus and Carter with Nicodemus includes to indicate, giving us on how the leading Pharisee, he was the leading Pharisees. He was like the, the big Pope. You know, the big Pope. That's the top man around here, the big Pope, right? Or you say the big Bishop. Leading all these people, all these people. But yet he never knew who Jesus was. My God, that, that, that part hurt me because I know people today are following false leaders. They're following people who don't even know. You hear it? You see it on the internet all over. They don't know. And you, you better catch yourself to say this 2022. You better catch yourself because Jesus is soon to come. And if you are, he, like I said, he, he, you can die before he come. People die and you will see it. How many people dying every day? Okay. You don't know when your time coming. This is where the story of Jesus, Nicodemus, Nicodemus. However, in John 19, see, see they, what they're saying here. We find about Jesus, what, what Nicodemus did. So you could do all kind of good works. Nicodemus in John 19, you could see where Nicodemus, he was with, 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 with um, Joseph of Amateria, Amateria, were the one who, they buried Jesus' body in, the, in, in John 19. I'm going to tell you something. You could do all the good works. Good works ain't gonna get you to heaven. I'm sorry. Ain't gonna get you to heaven. You could bury the Pope. You can, you can, you can, I'm gonna call on him. You could do the greatest things for whoever. Our president, you could do all these things. But I'm telling you, if you don't accept a man, be born again. Now, I don't, I'm not getting there when you all study Nicodemus on your own. I'm not no theologian to tell you all nothing. Go study Nicodemus on your own and find out what happened to Nicodemus and where and what. Because he was a ruler, a leader, and everything. I'm telling you, God show me in this story some things, even in our world today. And I mean the world. I do global ministry. I talk to people, and I know, God, you got to look in your community, in Africa. Look in, in the Caribbean. Look in Australia. In the Asian community. Look and see what's going on. Who are you following? Who is your leader? Okay, what are they doing? Well, even here in our community, we need to know. 
Okay, this is what um, I'm chest. Uh, I'm Chesterton said. He said issue is not clear. It is between light and darkness. He said. He said issue is now clear. Lord, forgive me, Jesus. Y'all gotta excuse me. Okay, the issue is now clear. It is between light and darkness, and everyone must choose a side. What side are you gonna choose today? Light or darkness? You need to make up your mind. Okay, make up your mind. I'm gonna do another in five minutes. I want you to understand this that. I'm a servant of God. I'm not, um, I'm, 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 I'm like, like, I'll even tell you myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm peculiar. And, and, and I, and I know who I am and I know my calling and I know my purpose and I know what God is saying to me. And I'm an individual, like I said, I'm confident in what God has assigned me to do. And I'm serious about it even more this year and nothing and nobody going to stop me. I'm determined come what may. Radio, TV, where God put me in my community, my church. Every, I'm coming with the word of God. I'm coming straight from the Bible of God. Because you know what? I have to answer to God. He has assigned people to me wherever I go. Divinely appoint you. And you need to repent. He will put people in your part. Or send me to tell somebody else to tell you, watch this program. So you could open your mouth to get to know him. That's how God works. It's a joining. We're helping each other. Okay? For God so loved the world. This is the reason why believing in Jesus brings eternal life. And that means believing in Jesus brings you into a vital fellowship with God. That is called eternal, forever. Eternal means forever. On and on, eternal, like I said earlier, which does not mean that it is life in this future world. You know, this future world is just life. But when you live on and on, that's what Christ came so we can not just live in this world. Because he said in this world, you know, we live in this world. He said, enjoy life to the fullest. Abundant life, he came that we may have life, life to the fullest and abundant life. Yes, but he also he came that we may have eternal. Study the word eternal, see what it means. But it's called eternal life here and now because here and now, this life is mean very vital. Vital fellowship with God is established and begins to run on into eternity. The great triumphant life forever and ever and ever. Come on now, if you listen to me, if you want to live forever, I'm telling you. You don't want to go to hell. That fire can be burning, burning. And, and, and see, when you, some of you don't understand. That lesson coming later on. Hell, hell fire burns, burns, burns. And you're going to feel that fire. And as that fire burn, you're going to be burning up. You're going to be burning in the hot fire, but your body not going to be burning. That's hell. I'm telling you. But in eternal life with God, we're going to live eternal, 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 and study on heaven. Some, some, heaven, study heaven. You're going to live on and on and on and on. Oh, my, this is very interesting. Let me go back into the golden text and explain this as I... No, no, let me do another sinner's prayer right now before I go into the golden text part because I really want to make sure. I really want to be... I'm obeying God. Shaniqua Ferguson, my cousin from the Bahamas, thanks for joining me. And all of you, all, like I said, all of you out there on, 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 on... This is a new year. This is the first day of 2022, like most of you know. Many of you are tired and you're out, and I appreciate you joining me. Every Saturday, I, I have a guest sometime, line up, people line up, coming in for half an hour, but I will try to do the first half an hour. They'll do a sinner prayer. I'll do a sinner prayer. God has great plans for my ministry. God has great plans for our community. There are ministers and pastors. Some of y'all need to go back on my Facebook, going back on some of my YouTube ministry, normal first. Ferguson Hill, check my YouTube ministry. I put a lot of stuff on there to know what God is doing. The other ministry, other people, other people are working for God. And you know, people, all I'm saying is I have to be obedient to God for what he called me to do. And I'm sharing to you what he's doing to my ministry, my life. Okay. So all I'm saying, find a church. I go to South Cleveland Church of God, you know, 8440, 1846, um, uh, on Volunteer Drive, great church where it's free. I like, because I could worship. My members, your people tell me, I like where I can go free and shout and praise the Lord and jump and dance and hallelujah, praise and worship. I ain't going to be bind up and bind on the devil's lie. You better find yourself where you can worship and be free. This is a year to be free, to fly in Jesus. I'm telling you. Okay, now if you don't know Jesus and you didn't repeat it the first time or you just came on, God appointed you. Facebook, you all, you all going through this right now. See, this is the life. You missed the light. Jesus is the light of the world. Okay, Jesus is the light of the world. He tell me, let my light so shine before men. They'll see good works. I want this light shine bright for you. Come on, light. This light will shine bright for you. Others will see good works. Maybe this battery dead. Anyhow, I want you to repeat this. Say, Jesus, um, I come before you right now. 
Because you are the light of the world. Now, I've given you time to repeat. Say, Jesus, you are the light of the world. And I want the light. But first, I have to, A, B, C, like I always say, I have to accept the fact that you came as the light. I accept, Jesus, that you died, you rose again, you went to the Father, and you're coming back. But I need their God to confess that I'm a sinner. Right now, I want to repent of my sin. I want to get rid of these bad things I'm doing, all the things I've been doing. You know what you're doing. I'm not going to call. You know what you're doing. Every individual know what you're doing. So I'm going to stop doing those things. I'm going to get rid of those things, Lord. I'm not going to love those things no more. I want to love what you love. I want to get into your word. I'm going to study your word this year. I'm going to find a church, a pastor. I'm going to find somebody to help me. See the light? I want you to know God is serious. God is the life of the world. He wants you to be a light. And he wants you to shine. You who are weak, he's telling me right now. Some of you, yes, you're saved. And yes, you give your heart to God. But you need to shine brighter. That's what he's saying now. You need to go and win souls. This is the year to win souls for Jesus. That's all I saw. Salvation, salvation. People need to know Christ. God so loved this world. He really not all shall come to him. None shall perish. But how are they going to know the word if some of us, we don't tell them? And we don't talk to them about us. We need to shine. Okay? And then after you repeat that, you said, Jesus, I thank you for saving me. I thank you, Lord, for forgiving my sins. I know that, God, that you love me and you care about me. And I want to see you one day when I die or when you call. Help me to live right. All of those things. You're just, you're just talking and getting rid of what's in you. Say, renew a right mind in me. Say, I want to change this mind. I want a mind like you, Lord. I want to, I want to um, renew my heart, Lord. Say, change this wicked heart. That's the part. Oh, Jesus just dropped in my spirit. He said, the heart of the mind is deceitful and wicked. No man know it but God. Say, Lord, take this wicked heart. That's where it come and start with in the heart. Oh, gee, hallelujah for giving me. Hallelujah. He said, get rid of that wicked heart. Your heart needs to be cleansed and washed. Then get your mind. He said, your mind. Whatever man think it, so is he. Think on good things. Bible's where things are true, honest. Get your mind together. Don't let no one mess your mind up, man. Your mind is powerful. God give us a mind to think of good things. Oh, Lord, I got 10 more minutes. And I got to finish this lesson. So once you don't repeat those words, okay, and you ask God, you should be, you can feel the spirit coming upon you. I'm serious. You can feel the spirit coming upon you. Your flesh can eventually die, die, die. When I say the flesh, I'm talking about the wickedness. All the sinful lust. And all of the sin. Because you can start reading your Bible. Now nah, start reading your Bible. I know some of you get COVID. You, 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 you don't, you don't want to go. Okay, we'll read that Bible. And God's going to reveal to the scripture. You see the scripture. The word of God. Some of you don't realize. is God's spoken word. It will come at you. It will knock your heart. Go in John. Then go in, then go in Mark. Matthew and Mark. Like I said. Go, go, the, word, the word of God is what's going to saturate you. The word of God is what's going to cut sin. The word of God is what's going to cut you and tell you that's wrong. That's right. Okay, get into the word. Go into David. Go in Psalms. Go, go, go into areas, Romans. Those scriptures are Hebrew. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm telling you, read the Old Testament. And that alone, I'm telling you, I'm talking from experience. I have to stay in the word every day, you know, me too. Y'all think I dumb it. The devil's a lie. I stay in the word for me. And I tell my husband, we do our devotion. Do your devotion. Every day, pray every day. Read your Bible. Get your household. Anoint your doors. Get your prayer cloth. Your car. Anoint everything this year. Get someone to pray all the way. I'm telling you, you better get yourself together because we are fighting a warfare this year. Okay? See this thing coming back upon us? I'm telling you, don't let it take hold of you. It's coming away, but then you are not, you're in the world, but not off the world. Let me finish up this last minute. Golden, two, two. It's the golden text in John 3 and 3. Says, Jesus answered and said unto him again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot, cannot see the kingdom of God. Now that's Jesus' word. Go in the Bible. That ain't man word. That ain't no other Paul or Peter. That's Jesus' word. This is a repetition of the word. Verily, verily. See what that verily means. By Jesus shows the earnestness. That's it. Earnestness, importance of what? Okay? He was about to say the word verily is translated from the Greek words amen. That's it. Amen. You must be born again. Amen. That's it. Okay? So be it. Okay? Essentially, Nicodemus was told unless he was super, he, he, he was supernaturally changed. 
okay? Nicodemus was told unless he was supernaturally changed or divinely transformed. Ooh. That's the word. People don't want to be transformed. You got to be transformed. You got to, you got to be a different person. People have to see you different. You got to have a transformation, an encounter with God, people. And sometimes that can take some things, something drastic will happen to you. You may go through a, 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 some type of, um, 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 I don't know what to say because some of you own could handle, God only, God knows what you can handle. Because I know what I had to go through to, to have an encounter with God. I went through a lot, different things. And I could name it, but the time won't do it. Some of you know my stories. God changed me, transformed me transformation, encounter with God. And that's what he's saying. You're not divinely transformed. He cannot see the kingdom of God. That's what I'm saying now. The, the idea of seeing kingdom involves partaking of it. You got to get involved in becoming a citizen of it or becoming incorporated into God's realm of peace and loves and righteousness. The experience of entering into the kingdom of God is called the new birth and comes from above. It is impartation of new life from God himself, not from man, not from your pastor, your leader, your teacher. You want impartation with God's word. These words emphasize, okay, emphasize the necessity of a new word when not spoken to one who might be called. You see, sometimes we think it's just for the sinners, the repentance. We think it's just for the adultery and the thief and the liar. This is for Nicodemus, the teacher, the doctor, and the pastor. All the leaders, because Nicodemus was a leader. He was a big professor in the church. He was what you call like a pope. He was the ruler of the Jews and a teacher of the law. But the man was not born again. I saw the clan cluster. He wasn't born again. It's in the word. Read the word. Do you know someone like that? I'm telling you that people like that. God show me that people like that. I don't know all of them. You know some of them. I don't know. But I'm just telling you. You could be under their leadership. And you being led astray. Don't even realize it. This is not the year to be ignorant. This is not the year to be following. Just, just go into following something. You need to know the word for yourself. Get into the word for yourself. The message for us too is no matter how moral or religious we might be, unless we are reborn spiritually through believing in Jesus Christ, we cannot. That's Jesus' word. That's not my word. That's not no man's word. This is the word. Because sometimes, you know, like like one, I heard T.D. Jakes, because I listened to him too. That's one of my mentors. That's a couple of them I've been trying to meet him. He said, you know, some, some part of the Bible we don't like. The one would said, he said that, you know, some people don't like this. But that's the word of God. He said, you know, we must love our enemies. And, and, and we must um, 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 pray for those who persecute us. And I said, not true. And we must do all of these things. So people who do bad things doesn't do it, you know. That's what God tells us to do. We got to do it. What God says, we got to do it. You know, some things we may get by all what somebody else say or what your pastor or what this one say. We may get over when God says something. We better do it because we want to really enter the kingdom of God because that's what's going to keep you being born again when you, when you obey God's word. Some of it is hard. Yes, some is hard to swallow, but we got to obey God's word. And you know who can help you? Jesus. Jesus can help you. Some of these things we're not doing of our own. Once you get God in you and he sanctified you, and he filled you. That's another thing you need more deeper. Once you get saved, try and get the sanctification. You know, I went last night to the church. called sanctified. The church called sanctified. We got to have sanctification. You know, Bishop Hill, a uh, nice message, night, ser night service. Go, go, go where you could be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and anointed. You need deeper, deeper, deeper stuff. Okay? Get sanctified. For some of you who are being saved, get sanctified. And, and evidence of speaking in tongues. That's another message I can find. All of that is helping you to go on. I'm saved. I'm sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire burning, sp tongue speaking, shouting, jumping. I love it. It keeps me going. I'm telling you, I need all that to teach. I need all to stay holy, sanctified. I need all that to keep my mind. To I need it. I'm teaching and I'm helping people. You think I ain't going to do that? Honey, I'm telling you. I stay with God. I'm telling you, you have to. You have to when you're teaching others. And you know, you got to know where you are. Because what happens is this. We, when we walk out of our house, we, 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 we're in warfare. This life is warfare. I'm going to close right now because my time is up. But I want each and every one of you this year, like I said, get deep in God. I don't know which one I could say. Get people saved. Get people to Jesus. Help people to come to know Jesus. Father, I thank you again for the service. I thank you, Lord, for using me. I thank you once again, God, for what you're doing in my life. And I thank you for everyone connected, Mr. Jones, with this station. As we, as I come in even through the week and as I pray, that this station will be used to bring kingdom work to international people all over the world, dear God. That we in Cleveland, we can be the church. We can be the church. We're going to be the body of Christ. We're going to be the kingdom of God. We're going to be who God calls us to be. And that's a city 
with the Holy Spirit and with the anointing. We're going to wake together, pastors waking together, church waking together. We're going to wake united together as pastors go to conference and lead us pray in this community. Father, we're going to be, we're going to be born again. We're going to get people saved. We're going to get them sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you for watching Facebook. God bless you.